Hey everyone, in this video we'll be looking at Chapter 5 of Practical Object Oriented Design in Ruby. Chapter 5 is all about duct typing, and duct typing is basically the idea, uh, or it's a, it's a way of setting up your classes in such a way to make it as dry as possible and easiest to maintain in the future. So Sandy's example talks about a trip class that communicates with several other classes and she shows the best way to to arrange it in her opinion it's and it's a it's a pretty good way so so the the broad idea she talks about uh, Sandy says the purpose of object oriented programming is to reduce the cost of change and so what duct types are is a way of refactoring classes and writing them in such a way that they play well together with the least amount of words and effort on your part and she talks about the the cost of of overlooking overlooking the duck if you don't do it there will be a lot of specific method calling within other classes and that's a problem because if you change something like the name of the method that gets called you have to change that reference in the trip class as well and so that's changes in two places when you really are only changing one kind of functionality. And that doesn't seem very significant, but it gets bigger. You know, here, if there are, if there's more than one type of preparer for the trip class. So here it's only the mechanic, but there could and certainly are later on in the chapter many more preparers, and all of their methods have to be referenced specifically within the trip class. And you have a, a case statement, which again is, is more complex than, than optimal. So the next section is called finding the duck. And you can see, you can see a duck waiting to be made uh, in the prepare method for all the different characters, mechanics, coordinators, drivers, all, all have to do with the fact that their prepare methods do the same activity, which is get ready for a trip. And it's each in their own ways, but nevertheless, they are all doing this broader activity, which is preparing for a trip. The duck that's emerging from the muck here is a preparer class, or duck in this case. And the change that we'll have to make to reflect this is by replacing all the specifically named preparation methods in each of the classes with a simple prepare trip method that takes the trip itself as a param. And then in the trip class itself, instead of having to call prepare bicycle, prepare car, whatever else, you can just say prepare trip. And so you've basically refactored this to be much, much uh, more concise, as well as if you need to make changes to, you know, prepare bicycle, for example, in the future, you won't have to leave the mechanic class because the reference in the class trip remains the same. It's still prepare trip in both places. But the question is, how do we know when to use them? Because we shouldn't use them all the time. And how do we see opportunities to use them? So there's a section about recognizing hidden ducks. And if you find yourself using case statements or methods like kind of, response to, or is a, those, those give you an idea that there might be something you can do to, to duck your code. And the, the broader concept is that all of these classes, these mechanic, trip coordinator, and driver classes, are going to the trip class to do the same thing. Although it's done in different ways, prepare bicycles, buy food, gas up, like although although their individual tasks are different, they are all they're all going to the trip class to do prepare. And so that's why it's and so because you have this case statement, or if you use kind of response to, those are those are ways that you can like check for the class of a, of something. And and those are definitely very valid and you'd certainly see them out in out in the world but those are sort of 
hat tips to you that you, this might be an opportunity for you to to do a duck type. There's also going to be a lot of sharing of code between ducks, and this is something that's covered in chapter seven. And uh, lastly, there's a brief section about choosing your ducks wisely, and basically the idea behind that is you you might have opportunities to make ducks that you wouldn't actually want to take advantage of. And the reason for that is sometimes it just makes things more unwieldy. Or if you're, you're using the is a method, for example, and you're checking against Ruby core classes, it's, it's more, it's, it's better for your code in the future that you just use that instead of trying to make a duct type for integers versus hashes or or whatever the case may be. The last section, conquering a fear of duct typing, is not related to duct typing at all, but more of a philosophical look at static versus dynamic languages. It's interesting, but it's not relevant, so I'm not covering it here. Thanks everybody. I'll see you in the next video.